Now the next prediction I have for comic book collecting in 2024 is what I'm simply calling the gun effect. And of course what I mean by the gun effect I, along is with the a group James of very talented effect. writers. I think that started this map out an 8 to 10 year plan of what DC all the episodes Next is a big movie called The Authority. The Authority is a passion project of mine. It's a loser from the future this who uses future technology of Batman and, and his actual son, Damian Wayne. This is based on Grant Morrison. This is called Superman Legacy. This is being written by me. I'm in the middle of it. I'm having a great time doing it. And Superman will be released into theaters July 11th, 2025. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swagalhaas. Don't call it a comeback. FOMO has been here for years. That is right. In this video, we need to talk about FOMO and how I am now in the process of selling all of my comic books so that I could buy more copies of Booster Gold number one. Yes, that is right. I am all in on Booster Gold and I am all in on James Gunn and DC. And apparently I'm not the only one because boy oh boy has the comic book market been set on fire after the announcements we got yesterday. Everything is flying out there in the market. A lot of comic book dealers right now are saying their prayers to James Gunn. They got their James Gunn shrines up there on the mantle because finally, finally, we have a little bit of movement in the comic book market. So in this video, we're gonna get into the books, we're gonna talk about what James announced, and we're gonna talk about some of the interesting movement that has been happening in the market. And then at the end of the video, I might put on my tinfoil hat, take a little trip down to Pepe Sylvia Town, and ask myself the question, why now? Why did we get this James Gunn announcement this week? But before I get into the video, if you guys could drop me a like or a comment or subscribe if you're enjoying the content, helps support the channel, doing things, I'd appreciate it. But let us get into this video here today. And of course, the first things we gotta do is talk about all of the projects that the announcement revealed to us. Of course, if you guys haven't seen it, James Gunn came out with a video, kind of this PR announcement explaining, you know, sort of the first phase of the DC kind of slate. You know, he explained how he wanted to do a connected universe and it's gonna focus on the gods and monsters storyline. And we got a ton of projects that he announced. I'm gonna quickly kind of just highlight some of the projects here, just so you guys are familiar with them. And then we're gonna kind of dig into some of the books that moved. I'm not gonna get into all of them because there are so many. I mean, these books are going to be on every single hot list uh, for weeks to come. But of course, the first big movie he announced is Superman Legacy. This is the Superman film that he, in fact, is writing. And it's going to be their marquee movie in July of 2025. That comes only two months after Avengers Kang Dynasty, which I thought was pretty interesting. I mean, we're definitely going to have that sort of, you know, uh, friendly DC Marvel rivalry in the summer of that year. Uh, we also got the announcement for The Authority, an interesting one, kind of the, you know, uh, tougher, more ruthless version of the Justice League. We got a Brave and the Bold series. This one is going to be, you know, Batman and his son Damien as Robin. We got Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, you know, kind of a, a hardened Supergirl. We got a Swamp Thing movie in the works. We're getting a Creature of Commando series. We're getting a Waller show. We're getting a Booster Gold show. We're getting a Lantern show. And then lastly, we're going to get a Paradise Lost show, which is basically set in the Wonder Woman universe and effectively, as he described it, was going to be a little something like Game of Thrones. But let's get into this first book here. And I think this one is going to be sort of the winner FOMO book of the week. I mean, I do think that there's going to be a lot of Supergirl and Superman uh, kind of modern books that top the charts. Maybe those are going to be the number one books that went for sale. But if we're talking about pure FOMO, I mean, this book right here by Dan Jurgens from 1986 is definitely the one that feels like it was perfectly primed to have tons of sales. I mean, I counted over a hundred sold listings just on eBay in the last day. I mean, that is a tremendous amount of copies being sold. I mean, in all the time I've been doing this YouTube channel, you know, I've been talking about like uh, all the trailers that come out, all the different Marvel projects that are released, you know, San Diego Comic-Con announcements, D23 announcements, over a hundred sold books is a tremendous amount of copies. Like even in the most FOMOing of FOMO, you know, when we get announcements for Frogman, we still don't get over a hundred sales. I mean, that is quite a lot. But interestingly enough, this book did not set the all-time record price for itself. It came very, very close. As you can see right here, the last sale here in January, we got a 9.8 sale of 615, but we actually did get a sale in 2021 
around the $900 range. Now, I'm not really sure what that was. Maybe that $900 sale was, you know, a newsstand or something like that. Hard to really say, but we did get close to kind of flirting with the record highs for this thing. In fact, as suspiciously, we actually got one $650 sale before the announcement. I almost wonder if somebody had some insider info and decided to make a purchase off of eBay at that particular moment in time. And you can see just in the last day, I mean, the numbers are kind of all over the place. You know, we have a 369, we have a 615, but generally speaking, we're looking at that kind of $500 price point, which is a lot higher than earlier in the month where this book, you know, you see a bunch of twos and threes as opposed to here where you see a bunch of four, fives, and six. So uh, definitely a lot of people, you know, pulling the trigger on this one, but it is a book that, you know, had a big pullback, had a big correction uh, and did get a pump in 2021. As you look at the graph right here, you know, a lot of people always talk about how the DC books have been severely undervalued. And I don't know, that might be the case, you know, if we're talking about very random, you know, spec books and things like that. But if we think about like the main DC keys, I mean, I kind of feel like they're right in line. A lot of them got the boost like all the other Marvel books they did in 2021. And a lot of their graphs look similar. And, you know, kind of where they sit today is probably right in line to the values of where they should be. You know, if we're talking about the majorly well-known keys, which we'll talk about a little bit later in this video. Now, I do think that this is really interesting, the booster gold number one. This is definitely the book that is getting the most love, but I couldn't help but be reminded of New Teen Titans annual number two, first appearance of Vigilante. This is a book that also sort of came out in that same time frame, And I know it's not a perfect comparison, but generally speaking, I feel like these characters are kind of around the same tier. And it's really interesting to me that when you go into the previous sales for this thing, you see that this is now a book selling at the 163, 154, 145, 182. I mean, talk about a great time to pick up a 9.8 copy of this book. You know, if you got booster gold money, you might as well be buying New Teen Titans annual number two because we are getting a Waller show. And even though it wasn't directly announced that Vigilante is going to be a part of it, uh, it was inferred later on after the announcement that, you know, a lot of the people in Peacemaker might have a role in that show. And we still are getting a Peacemaker season two, which ultimately calls into question, why aren't people buying this book right now? This feels like a good one to pick up on the dip, or it could also concern some people out there. I mean, think about how much this book has crashed, you know, in getting an HBO TV show. And if you're thinking about Booster Gold, I feel like he's going to suffer the same fate where his book is going to spike up to that, you know, $300, $400 price point, you know, because of the FOMO and stuff. And then when he gets his HBO series and then after season one, it's going to dip back down to this $163 price point. So, you know, you got to be careful with this FOMO stuff. But again, if you want the book, get the book. All right, the next book that's been blowing up the charts right here is Batman number 650. This is the first appearance of Damian Wayne, who, of course, is the son of Bruce Wayne, Batman. James Gunn announced that it's going to be a Brave and the Bold series with these two characters. I actually do think that that is a good take to have for the Batman character. It's been a while since we've gotten him with Robin. So I do think that there is different stories that they can finally do. And this is definitely a book that, like the other ones, has sold quite a lot in the last couple days. We go in here to GPA. We can look at this one. It's actually one that, you know, had also been spec'd on in 2021. You can see some of the record prices for this thing were hitting, you know, sort of that peak FOMO time in the summer of 2021. Although we did get a $300 sale uh, coming off of this announcement, which again is not quite the record price, which you can see right here at 306, but you know, pretty close overall. It is impressive to see how many sales for this book there are out there. And this is one of those ones where, you know, it's in the year of 2006, which was kind of a lower time in the market for comic books, which does make it hard to sort of figure out if this book is actually rare, uh, you know, for a modern book. I mean, it's hard to say. I bet there's a lot more booster gold number ones than there are Batman 656. Then again, this is in a Batman title. So, you know, there, you no matter how down the market is, there were still going to be people buying up Batman, especially being, you know, written by Grant Morrison. So I feel like this is probably not that rare. I think that there's probably still a decent amount of copies out there for this one. So I would imagine that if you're somebody who actually really wants this book, you know, go to the LCSs, check those back bins. I feel like they're going to be in there. But speaking of books that possibly could be rare, the next one that we have to talk about is this one that is blowing up right now, The Authority Number One. Now I got to say, I haven't done the math for the swag scale on this one, but I would definitely suspect that this is going to be a risky pick overall. Definitely going to be in the speculative range. But with that being said, you can definitely tell that this is a book that is going to have a low census. I, I can actually imagine that this is not that easy to find. Although I have talked to a lot of comic book collectors who say, oh dude, I got like 20 copies 
in a in a bin, you know, in my back stock. So you do have to wonder. I mean, maybe six months from now, we're gonna see like the Helms Deep, you know, flood of orcs just arriving at CGC. You know, droves and droves of this book being slapped in the 9.8 grade. Uh, really hard to say. You know, 1999 Wildstorm book. You know, I can't imagine that there were a lot of sales back in the day. Right now, it's at 156 universal copies, but I could easily see this jumping up to that 600, 700. You know copy range, you know, once we get, you know, the submissions, but this actually is a book that was able to have a record sale at the $550 range. I mean, $500 seems to be kind of the price point that, you know, the FOMO price that a lot of people pay for 9.8s, you know, specifically that of the modern variety. Uh, and there's been a ton of sales for this thing. Now, one of the other big books that has been moving quite a lot in the market is this Weird War Tales number 93. This is the first appearance of the Creature Commandos, of course, the Monster Squad of the DC Universe. A lot of people love, you know, DC Horror. It seems to have a lot bigger of a fan base than that of Marvel Horror. And I do think that this is a very interesting book. Of course, there's the Creature Commandos number one. That's their first solo series that it's also moving quite a lot. But, you know, for my money, if you're somebody out there who wants to make a play on this, you know, it seems like getting this book right here, which is a Bronze Age book, would be the safer bet overall. That being said, you know, this one is definitely one that is selling for a lot higher. I mean, not many on the census, but as we know, that's probably because nobody in their right mind decided to actually ever slab this book. You know, I do know somebody who mentioned to me that they have a ton of raw copies, you know, just sitting in bins and they're even thinking to themselves like, oh, maybe I'll send all of mine into CGC. So you got to be careful careful with this sort of thing. We actually did get a $1,000 sale on eBay for a CGC 9.8. I think if I go down here, yep, right here, $1,095. This is the record price for this particular book, uh, which again, you know, you got to be a little bit careful with the team books because you never know what version of the team you're going to get. I mean, we did see a couple characters in the James Gunn movies that, you know, were represented on the Creature Commando squad. Of course, Joel Kinnaman's character is actually a member of the Creature Commandos and Weasel of all characters is another member of the Creature Commando. So you could see James Gunn bringing back Weasel into the fold. But again, like the team books often do, you don't know who's going to be on the team. And there might be certain books that have certain first appearances that are not necessarily in Weird War Tales number 93. So there might be other books that pop off in the market, not just this one, which kind of diffuses some of the values. All right, the last couple of books I wanted to talk about is some of the more big boy books that we know the market had already been talking about and specking on. Of course, Green Lantern, number 87, the first appearance of John Stewart, Green Lantern. A great book in my opinion. This one actually rates around a 17 to 18 on the swag scale. We didn't necessarily get a ton of FOMO uh, for this book. We had a handful of sales. We got one, two, three CGC copies. A 5.5 went right here, an 8.5 for a thousand, and then a 4.0 went for you know a slash price of 350. And generally speaking, these are not the record prices for this book. I think the 8.5 is a decent sale, but you know again, this is one of those ones where you know we're not necessarily setting all-time record high prices like we were in 2021. But because of this announcement, you know, the books do get a little bit more liquid. And that includes this book right here, House of Secrets number 92, first appearance of Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing, of course, another character that was announced to have a movie coming out. And this is one of those books that I think actually rates pretty high on the swag scale. This one actually gets an 18 to a 19, which puts it in the certified key, almost pushing the blue chip category. You know, if you want to go there, I do think that Swamp Thing is an interesting character. And this is actually one of those books that did have a record high sale. We had an 8.0 sell for $4,400. You can see it right here on this listing, $4,400, 8.0 sale, which is the record high price for this book in this particular grade. But again, I just kind of want to show you guys this graph, like all the other DC books, you know, this is one that did get a lift in 2021, then had the pullback uh, down here in kind of the end of 2022. And this is also a book that had been speculated on, you know, for a long time in 2018. And it seems like with this James Gunn announcement, we're finally going to get the Swamp Thing film that a lot of people have been, you know, wanting for. I remember watching the Swamp Thing movie when I was a kid, absolutely loved the character. So I I'm actually really, really excited for this one. Of course, there's a ton of other books that moved in the market. The Supergirl one, the Superman one. There's a lot of different spec that's going on. Uh, it's really interesting to see, you know, all of this FOMO coming back into the market and a lot of excitement just in general for comic book collectors. Of course, comic book collectors absolutely love potential. 
more so than that of what is actually realized on screen. You know, it's really, really exciting, and I'm hoping that these DC properties are going to be good, but I'm not going to hold my breath, right? Like, you know, we have a long way to go for DC to kind of get to the level that we hope that they can get to. And I think that it's, you know, really interesting that we got this James Gunn announcement, you know, in this random week here, you know, in the end of January, beginning of February. Why did James Gunn actually decide to come out with this? And I actually think it has everything to do with the fact that DC has four movies coming out this year. They have, you know, starting with Shazam number two, which again, a lot of people are not really loving that trailer. You know, we have an Aquaman movie, we have a Flash movie. You know, there, there's so many movies that are on the slate that actually don't have much to do with the James Gunn universe. I think that Warner Brothers right now is putting out a PR campaign because they know that a lot of people aren't really interested in these films simply due to the fact that we all sort of know that they don't connect. So James Gunn has to go out there and he kind of has to explain that, yeah, the Flash movie sort of ties in to my universe. And, you know, I have my Hollywood spies. I know that they're out there. They've told me about the film. And while I do think it's possible they can make it tie into this James Gunn universe, that was never the original plan. So I do think it is really interesting that they have to kind of make sure that people go and see these movies with the expectation that they might give us some breadcrumbs leading into the James Gunn universe because as we all know, Warner Brothers is in a tough financial situation. They do not have that much cash you know, in the bank. And if these four movies flop this year, that's going to make it really difficult for James Gunn to have the budget to produce the type of content that he ultimately would want to produce. Anyways, that's hard for this video. FOMO is alive and well in the comic book market. Did you guys FOMO into anything yesterday? What DC books do you guys have your eyes on now? Drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content, and I'll see you in the next video.